All right, my dudes. So AMD recently launched their RX 6600. It retails or has an MSRP of 330 US dollars. And based on all the reviews that I've seen from guys like Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unbox, Pulse Hardware, the reception has been pretty darn underwhelming. Uh, fairly negative, I would say. Definitely a lack of enthusiasm with this card, as we've seen with a lot of GPUs, both on AMD and Nvidia's side in recent months, if not recent years, almost at this point. And why is that specifically for the 6600? Well, essentially you're getting roughly, at best, 5% more performance over a 5600 XT, which is a last generation card, but it's essentially being priced about 20% higher. So you're paying quite a bit more for barely any more performance. In fact, it's, it's performance that's so negligible, you won't even really notice a difference in your gaming experience. Uh, but you're gonna, your wallet's going to notice it, right? Um, so after that, you know, I was actually planning to use the RX 6600 for this build, you know, to celebrate its launch, even though there's really not much cel worth celebrating these days uh, for, for GPUs. But once I started reading and watching all the reviews, I quickly decided that maybe the 6600 wasn't the best GPU to use. So I reached out to you guys on Instagram, took a poll and said, do you want to see me still use the 6600 for this build? Or should I switch over to the RX 6600 XT, which came out uh, just before this one um, and it's priced a little bit higher at 380 or 379 USD MSRP, but it is notably faster from all the benchmarks that, uh, that I've seen. If you look at any of the benchmarks that have just gone up on this card, 6600 XT pretty much smokes it um, as, as to be expected, I guess. But you guys decided on Instagram that the 6600 XT would be the more appealing GPU for you to watch me build with today. So that is what we're doing. This build is more focused around the build itself, me putting together an awesome looking system that's not really focused around value or pricing. Like pricing didn't factor into any of the parts that I chose. You can definitely build a system that's cheaper than this that will either match or outperform it. Uh, you know, with, with frame rates and stuff. I just wanted to put together something that looked cool because honestly, I get more excited these days with putting together a sweet looking rig than I do actual computer hardware, because uh, particularly with GPUs, because well, obviously. Um, so that's what we're doing. And I guess I should just, I keep getting up and sitting down. I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, let's just go ahead and quickly go through each of these parts really quick. Before we continue, special thanks to Karma for sponsoring this video. Karma is a free app and Chrome extension that saves you money on thousands of products, notifies you of price drops, finds you coupon codes, and much more. In fact, Karma actually found me deals on some of the components that I'm using for today's build, like the Muse Text case and the ASRock motherboard, which is pretty cool. If you go to Karma's website or the Chrome web store, you can install the Karma plugin, which only takes a sec, and start using it virtually everywhere. Just take a guess at how many stores Karma's currently partnered with. It's over 9,000! That's correct, Vegeta. Get notifications via email or mobile push when an item you save comes back in stock, goes on sale, or has an active coupon code. If you're looking at a product, just click the Karma icon on the right side of the page and choose what notifications you want enabled for that item. You can also create custom lists to keep your wishlist items organized for easier tracking. This way you're automatically notified if something goes on sale or drops in price. Another thing Karma can do is scan your cart for any active coupon codes and apply them for you at checkout. This is actually a computer specific feature, so I highly recommend the Chrome plugin. On top of that, you can also earn cash back via PayPal when you shop select retail partners. All of this adds up to a lot of money saved in the long run, and it's completely free to use. So definitely check out the link in the description below to start using Karma today. Starting with the CPU, uh, which is a Ryzen 5 5600G. This is an APU. It still, it still has six cores and 12 threads on it. Uh, oh, my, my bad. Definitely not as fast as, say, a Ryzen 5 5600X, but uh, it is notably cheaper as well. I believe it's going for around 239 US dollars right now on Amazon uh, versus mid 300s for a Ryzen 5. 5600X. Still a great CPU though for gaming. Uh, it's gonna be a nice little, I guess, mid-range build that we're putting together today. Uh, the overall, the total price for everything is about $1,200. And again, like I said, you can definitely go lower than that uh, and cut some corners, uh, but still get the same performance, if not better, if you just choose parts a bit more wisely than I did, focus more around performance and, and, and uh, corner cutting versus aesthetics. Uh, uh, aesthetics was a big thing for me today. Uh, so just bear that in mind. I can't stress that enough. Uh, for our GPU, we have the Asus ROG Strix. Uh, 
uh, Gaming OC RX 6600 XT. This is a lovely little card. This is the one that I tested actually in my 6600 XT kind of performance video review or whatever you want to call it um, a couple months ago, or I guess that was maybe a month or two ago. You can go ahead and watch that if you want, if you want a refresher on how this card performs, um, or if, uh, if you just don't know how the 6600 XT performs yet. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a nice little card. It's definitely a bit more substantial in every sense physically than the 6600 here we have from Sapphire. This is a Sapphire Pulse. If you just kind of look at them side by side, you'll notice this card's much bigger. It's got a much bigger cooler. It's much faster. It's much longer. There's more girth, thickness, just much bigger in every way. But they do both have a single eight pin power connector, so that's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, much beefier card, much faster card, much nicer looking card, in, in my opinion. Apart from the GPU, we've got a couple SSDs in no particular order here. Um, so again, this is all about aesthetics. None of this build makes sense, really. Very, very little of it makes sense. I wanted to get a, a one terabyte and then like maybe either a 250 or a 500 uh, gig SSD and just, you know, work them together. The smaller drive would be for our OS and the other one would be for like mass storage, games and stuff. But Amazon didn't have a one terabyte for this T-Force Team Delta RGB SSD in stock. So I just bought two 500 gigs, which makes no sense. Again, makes no sense. But the case that we're putting it in like displays uh, two and a half inch drives, right? Kind of front and center off to the right side of the motherboard. Um, so I kind of just really wanted something to be really lit uh, in, a, in a literal sense and have lots of RGB. I thought these drives would be a good fit, especially because I think they match the aesthetic of the chassis itself, as, as you're about to see. Um, and so I just bought two of these. They're identical. I got the black ones. But uh, moving on here, we have 16 gigs of Crucial Ballistics memory. This is a two by, uh, sorry, two by eight gig sticks of DDR4 3600 in white. And it does have RGB lighting on the top as well. Very nice kit. It goes for about, I don't know, 90 bucks or so, um, at least at the time of filming. And then we also have, uh, just really quickly, Antec sleeve cables. Antec actually makes some really nice sleeve cables. I was going to get the Asia Horse ones, but they weren't going to arrive in time. So this is actually a nice runner up around the same price point as well as the Asia Horse stuff. Uh, we also have a B550M Pro 4 from ASRock. So we are on the B550 chipset. We can take advantage of PCIe Gen 4, which the RX 6600 XT supports. And I didn't realize this board was actually a refurb model. Didn't realize it was refurbished. And if I just, this is my first time kind of taking a look at it. I'm really hoping that it's, that it works. It would suck so much if it's DOA. I should probably do a test boot. I'll do a test boot at some point, but if I can actually get this out. All right, here's the board, Micro ATX. I thought it'd be kind of cool to go with a Micro ATX build today because I just haven't used this form factor in quite some time and I'm kind of missing it. So it's nice to sort of bring it back. I like this board. It's it's relatively affordable at uh, about $110 I paid for it on, on the Amazon. It's got four DIMM slots. Uh, it has two M.2 slots, one of which has uh, a built-in heatsink cover, which is kind of handy. Two by 16 uh, PCIe Gen 4 slots. Or I think the top one's Gen 4, the bottom one's probably Gen 3. And we also have rear I.O. over here. If you want to take a quick look, some display outs, which is nice because we actually have an APU that can take advantage of those if needed. USB 3, plenty of USB 3. There's also a USB-C port there, PS2 port. Don't see those too often. And a D-sub port. That's fun. Uh, but yeah, nice board. Also, where is the, where's the I.O. shield? No way. There's no I.O. They seriously, oh, hell no. Hell no. I mean, at least this isn't a personal build and I'll probably just take it apart after it's done anyway, but that still sucks. That still sucks. I guess I guess refurbished models from Amazon don't guarantee all the original accessories because there's literally nothing else in this box apart from the board itself. No SATA cables, no manual, whatever. Oh, I at least expected an I.O. shield. That's stupid. Whatever, I guess the show must go on. Not the end of the world, but very annoying. Very, very annoying. Ugh. Okay, what else we got here? We got a power supply CX550F RGB from Corsair, 80 plus gold, I'm sorry, 80 plus bronze certified, fully modular, fairly affordable unit. I think I got this for 70, 70 USD. It does have an RGB fan on the top, which we will not be able to see whatsoever in this build. It's kind of pointless, but you know, in our hearts, in the back of our minds, we'll know that RGB is, is being lit up underneath the PSU strat of this case for whatever that's worth, which isn't much, I guess. Uh, we also have the case. So this is the case that I was sort of talking about, Muse Techs. I've never used this case before, never heard of this brand, the MK7 Gaming Micro ATX case. It is a Micro ATX case. Uh, it's not exactly, it's a white case. It's a white case. We're going with a black and white theme today with lots of RGB. I'm not sure if I'm just going to leave it on rainbow mode or, you know, maybe we'll play around with different colors and stuff. Maybe we'll do red because it's an AMD build, but um, not exactly my my usual style or taste uh, aesthetic wise. This kind of front panel and stuff, it's, it's very stylized and whatnot. Uh, not usually what I go for, but I kind of just wanted to switch it up, do something a little different, and it, it doesn't look bad. It's just not my 
my, my usual style. What I really like about it though, is that it was affordable. It was like 70, 70 or $80. Micro ATX case has a tempered glass side panel, no acrylic business. And it comes included with four fans. You actually have an option to get four or five fans with the case. If you get five fans, it comes with three 120s, one, two at the top, one at the rear, and then two 120s at the front, I believe. I opted for the four fan option, which has the same three uh, fans over here, but it actually has a single 200 millimeter fan at the front, which pretty much just takes up this whole mesh area. So it looks like it actually has decent airflow. The fact that you're getting four fans and one of those is a 200 millimeter fan, plus the case for 70, 80 bucks, I, I think that's actually a pretty damn good deal, especially if, if it works as well as everybody in the reviews says it does. It got really high marks on Amazon, so that was another selling point for me. So we're gonna be using that and I think, oh, I didn't even mention, so. Stealth, I believe, or I think it's maybe a Spire. What are you? What's in the box? Okay, so it's a Stealth. It comes included with a Stealth cooler. Forgot to mention that I don't wanna use the Stealth cooler. I wanna use something with RGB lighting on it. So we're gonna use an AMD Wraith Prism RGB instead, which uh, you could pick one of these up a la carte on Amazon for about 40 to $50 or so. I probably wouldn't pay that price for this cooler considering that I have so many of them that have just come with other CPUs and stuff. And I think there's honestly better coolers out there for, for the money than this guy. But uh, I don't know, I think it just, it'll match the build well when, when everything comes together. Again, like I said, a lot of the parts here don't make any sense unless you're talking about it from a cosmetic perspective. So again, I'm just trying to build something that looks badass because that's just, that's just the mood I'm in right now. So deal with it. Uh, links to all this stuff in the description below in case you're interested. Let's get started. All right, here we go. I actually have the motherboard propped up a little bit by, uh, with the SSD box just because uh, without it, you get a bunch of glare on the board from the light that's that's hitting it. So I just, just FYI, in case you guys are wondering. That also actually kind of makes it a bit more accessible for me when I'm installing stuff onto the board, like our 5600G here. How do I already have thermal paste on my fingers? I haven't even started, what? The life of a PC builder. So slot this guy in. The nice thing about this being a B550 board is that we don't need a BIOS update for the CPU to post. One less thing we have to do. Again, I just have to make sure that the motherboard works. So we'll do a test boot at some point, but that's good. Uh, oh, I gotta clean off the bottom of this cooler. It's all dirty. Yeah. Got some thermal paste here. This is from, uh, this is from an Aorus cooler, a Gigabyte Aorus cooler, uh, one of the AIOs. Forget exactly which one, but got some leftover paste here. I'm feeling a line today. That is a, that is a beautiful line if I do say so myself. And I'm going to carefully mount this guy. So I usually hook the bottom first, cause you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, there's a latch on either side of the cooler. Boom, boom, boom. And those have to go uh, underneath and around the, the tabs, I guess. Uh, they're sticking out of the top and bottom mounting uh, mounting brackets of the board. So I usually like to go for the bottom first. The bottom one I'll loop, I'll hook it, and then I'll carefully go down to Chinatown, press firmly, and then get the other guy on there. There we go. And then you just pull up this little lever to tighten it. CPU cooler installed. I'll also have to remember to plug in the uh, the RGB cables at the top, oh, at the bottom, at the bottom of the cooler so that we actually get some lighting. Let's go on to Mamory. Again, we've got 16 gigs here. DDR4, 3600. Crucial ballistics. This will look nice uh, next to the cooler. Even out the lighting a bit. Notches on the bottom. One and two. Quick and easy. So we have a, we're actually using, uh, again, two and a half inch SSDs today, not any M.2 drives. So at this point, we're pretty much already ready to put this inside of the case. Let me clear off the table a bit first, make room for the chassis. Move this guy. I'm actually most curious about this case. All the other parts I'm pretty familiar with, or you know, they're not just they're just not the most interesting. But there were so many positive reviews on this case that I'm really curious to see if they're accurate or people just don't know what a good case is. I want to see what the what kind of airflow we get, as well as just how reasonable it is to build in. Also, just curious about the quality, the actual build quality of the chassis because 70, 80 bucks could, could go either way. From some no-name brand. I don't know, maybe it's not a no-name brand. Maybe you guys have heard of this company before. Seems well packaged. That's good. No red flags so far. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. That is not too bad looking at first glance. Looks like a pretty decent paint job. I don't see any blemishes in the finish and the plastic doesn't feel too cheap at the front. 
Nice uh, metallic mesh, big 200 millimeter fan. We have thumb screws on the left side panel and a nice tempered glass panel on, or I guess on, thumb screws on the right panel, tempered glass on the left. What is going on here? Ah. Oh, geez, that could have been bad. That was very anticlimactic. But what is this? Oh, interesting. It's a ring. It's a pull ring. There's a pull. This is the first time I've ever seen that on a case. It has a pull ring, so you don't have to get fingerprints on the door, on the panel. That is actually a great idea, and it, it works just as it should. Very nice. Okay. Some documentation. I'm going to go ahead and take this side panel off. Okay. A little bit of flimsiness there, but not too alarming. Where are... Here we go. Ugh. All right, we got the accessories, mounting screws. I'll, gi I'll give you guys a closer look at the rest of the case in a sec, an, an up close look. But why don't we go ahead and mount the motherboard right now? Okay, in the board goes without an IO shield. So stupid. There is no middle standoff for this micro ATX board. And now I'm kind of missing it. It's been a while since I've done a build without without that middle standoff. I mean, there is a middle standoff, but it's not the, the raised one that, that plants the, the board to the case. You know what? I'm missing two standoffs. I need, I need to install two standoffs, actually. There's only these ones. Two, four, six, but I'm missing, I'm missing these two right here. So fortunately, looks like case includes the but there is no, there's no standoff adapter to screw them in with. So I have to use one of mine. I will get that right now. I mean, it's fine for me because I have like six of these things, but for someone who doesn't, I feel like they should have included that. Whatever. Strike one. Strike one, Muse Tex. Do better, bro. But honestly though, the interior here looks really good. Surprisingly good. Nice white painted interior. Ample cutouts, looks like in all the right places. No grommets, but kind of to be expected for a case of this caliber. Um, very nice PSU shroud with a cutout. So you'll be able to see your PSU and sticker, which isn't always a good thing, but you can always take the sticker off. We might have to do that depending. And now we're ready for the board. And off camera, I actually wired up the, the RGB the RGB cables for our Wraith Prism. So those are already good to go. I also plugged in the uh, plugged in the, the CPU fan, CPU cooler fan. So that will be working. We won't get any post errors. That looks pretty lined up. All right, motherboard installed. Why don't we install, let's install the SSD's nuts. Got them! Oh, I like the fact that the tempered glass panel is fully removable as well. It's always really annoying when they don't come off the hinges. Don't like it, not a fan. All right, so we got our Delta, our 500 gig Delta SSDs here. Two of them, again, makes no sense why we would have two 500 gigs. Not a single terabyte one, but whatever. And these drives will mount to the case. Oh, right, right here against the motherboard tray. To the right of the motherboard. One here, one here. I'm gonna have to try to face them the same way if, if the cable routing works. We could just run the SATA cables for one drive through the bottom here of the PSU shroud, and then the other set of cables maybe through here. We could even do, do it through the top if we wanted to, depending on how we want to orient them. So why don't I actually figure that out now? This way or this way? I think a this way. Let's do this way. Come on. Uh, wait, where's the, is it threading? Yes, it is. Perfect. All right, I'm only gonna do two screws per drive because that's, that's, all, that's all we really need. So we are gonna have to orient them slightly different uh, opposite directions in order to make it wired up. Well, not necessarily, actually. I take that back. I just have to rotate the top one because I think it's gonna be too much too much clutter if the cables for both SSDs come out through the same grommet here or the same cutout. And I also want them to be facing the same direction. So let's flip this guy and we'll have the, the cables for the top SSD come through the, the top cutout. And the cables for the bottom drive can come through the middle. This is making me realize I have just not used a two and a half inch drive in a very long time. I kind of miss them. No. No, not really. I actually don't. M.2 is just so much easier. And they're fast. Those NVMEs are quick, man. All right. Hey, it's actually looking pretty good so far. And uh, as you can see, you know, like I said, we're doing a black and white kind of monochromatic color scheme here. So I didn't want all of the products or, or all the components to be white necessarily. I wanted to definitely have some black and add quite a bit of contrast in this build as opposed to just whiting out everything. And the case already kind of sets that up for us a little bit because the fans themselves are black. They are RGB fans. They kind of have the, the see-through blades, semi-opaque blades, but uh, the, the fan frames themselves are black. So there's already a bit of contrast 
just in here um, out of the box. And I'm just kind of running with that, uh, with the SSDs and the board. And memory's white, but uh, you won't be able to see that much anyway. You'll be more focused on the RGB once it's all on. So I think uh, power supply is next. This is a very simple build. Very simple indeed. Just kidding, I lied. We're gonna do front panel connectors first. All right, power LED. Again, this is probably one of the most pointless things to try capturing on video because you just can't see anything unless you've got like a really good macro lens and just the right angle so that your hands aren't covering up everything. But barring those things, you just get to hear me struggle and moan a little bit. <laughs> there we go. They're in. They're in, baby. Okay, now power supply. <laughs> Had no idea Corsair had an RGB power supply like this. I wasn't aware of the CXF RGB series. On my radar now, Corsair is always pretty good build quality, at least on, uh, on the outside and stuff. And fully modular, fully modular, 80 plus bronze for roughly 80 bucks, if I remember correctly. Not too bad, RGB button. Not that it'll matter in this build, but uh, let's wire this up. Oh, and white cables. White cables as well. Not sleeved, obviously. They're the kind of flat, flattened cables that you're used to seeing. I guess the 24 pins kind of sleeve, but then, you know, a bunch of heat shrink and stuff. Uh, that's kind of nice though, that um, they're actually white. I mean, we are gonna be using the Asia Horse extensions anyway, but for builders who aren't using extensions or their own cables, uh, this is actually kind of nice. Oh, you know what? This is actually interesting. This is something worth noting. This PSU only comes included with one PCIe cable that has two six plus two pin connectors on it. Definitely worth noting because I feel like there's a lot of 550 watt uh, units or you know power supplies that are around this wattage that still have uh, you know like three or four, or I would say f at least four PCIe plugs, but this one only has two. Not that you would probably be pairing this with like a, a beefy GPU that has triple power connectors anyway, but it's something to bear in mind because there are other devices that, uh, that use PCIe. Um, besides just uh, GPUs and stuff. So if that were uh, a concern for you, something to be aware of before buying this, this unit. You only get two of those plugs. All right, now those are wired up. We can go ahead and put this guy in, which just looks like it loads from the side. I prefer side loading PSUs rather than rear loading, personal preference. And we'll have to jump around to the other side really quick. Oh, and you know what? The PSU actually looks pretty good on the other side. Uh, the sticker and stuff, I don't think I'm gonna have to remove the sticker because it's just, it's black and white. It actually matches really nicely. I think I thought of that when uh, when I was picking out the PSU. It's like, this will match. So smart, so smart, Kyle. Okay, that feels nice and snug. And while we're back here, I'm gonna show you guys a closer up look of, of what's what's going on behind this case. So we've got a generously sized CPU cooler cutout. Wasn't expecting that, honestly, uh, in this chassis. We have another tray here for a two and a half inch drive. Very nice. There's a single screw that uh, you can use to remove it. Um, it's very cheap and plasticky, but you know, it's just a, a small two and a half inch drive that it's holding, so probably not a big deal. We have a couple tie down points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, a lot of tie down points, even over here. That's nice. And and uh, down here, uh, below the power supply basement, we have a tray for uh, hard drives or SSDs. You can do three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives, I believe. You probably do a pair of three and a halfs. I think you can do a three and a half on the inside of the tray and one at the top. And then probably same thing goes for the SSDs. I don't think there's an actual like removable tray. Well, this 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 piece is removable. There's two screws at the bottom of the case. You remove those, you can pop this whole tray out. Mount your drives and then stick it back in there. Remount it that way. Let me double check how many drives can go in there. Two hard disk locations for three and a half inch drives, three SSD locations for two and a half inch drive. Okay, so I think it's just for, it looks like you can do two three and a half inch drives, like I said, one on the inside, one on the top, and then you could also mount uh, an SSD uh, to the top of it as well. But you wouldn't be able to obviously mount both a three and a half inch and a two and a half inch drive at the top of of this little cage here. Fortunately, there's plenty of other areas where you can mount two and a half inch SSDs. All right, we also have uh, this guy, which looks like a little hub connecting our fans. One, two, three, four. Four fans are already pre-connected, pre-wired up. This is our SATA power, power of the controller or the uh, the hub. And then we have LG, what does it say? LG, LED RGB. So this is the RGB switch. There's a switch at the, at the, uh, the front of the case in the front panel. It allows you to, I believe, change the colors and, and effects of, of the LED fans. So. 
That's cool. What is this? What is this guy? Oh, and this is just our three pin, five volt connection for addressable RGB. Connect this directly to the motherboard when we're ready. You know, since we're not actually mounting any hard drives in here, we can stick a lot of this stuff in that area, all these cables. Let me bust out the um, Antec cables extensions. Oh, I gotta put, I gotta put uh, cable trainers on them, or right, cable combs. I'll be right back. All right, I got the cable combs on. Uh, I'm just gonna use the stock PSU cable for the eight pin EPS cable for our CPU, uh, just because it's way up in the corner, you can hardly see it, and the cable's white. So uh, one less thing to worry about there. I'm gonna go ahead and wire some stuff up and we'll just go ahead and plow ahead with cable management. Starting with 24 pin, shove this big boy in here. Yeah, without any without any drives down here in the PSU shed, there's just a ton of room for, for storing all, all of our cables. Uh, the case did come with a couple really Really cheap, dinky zip ties. These are the lousiest zip ties I think I've ever seen. Let's see if it'll even hold this down before breaking. I reckon it's just gonna snap the second I try to pull it. What do you guys think? Three, two, one. Oh, that actually holding up pretty nicely. Well, I'll be damned. I stand corrected. I am sorry for doubting you, Musetex. Your zip ties are fantastic. Quite impressive for how wrappy they look and feel. They just feel like, feels like Laffy Taffy. Okay. I also wired up the SATA power cables to our SSDs off camera um, when I was putting on the cable combs, so that's good to go. I still have to wire up the SATA cable coming off of the, the, the fan hub, fan and RGB hub. Need some power here. And is this the best one to connect it to? We'll save RGB for the end. We've also got our PCIe for our single eight pin. That's gonna be going to our 6600 XT. Plug that in. And we can just stash this under here. I feel like I rarely ever use the tie-down points on the right side of the case, just because you can usually stick the uh, your CPU cable within the groove, within the groove of the case right here. It usually stays in place pretty nicely. If there's a bunch of RGB and other cables and stuff though, then, then these tie-down points are really handy. So see, there's actually quite a few cables on this side of the case, but it looks like I can tuck most of them within this flap as well. I'm not really caring too much about how this side of the build looks, in case you couldn't tell. Okay, at this point, uh, SATA cables, SATA data cables for the SSDs. Um, let me go ahead and flip this guy around. And our motherboard, I just remembered, didn't come with any SATA cables because it didn't come with anything except the board itself. Thank God I have a bunch of SATA cables. Ooh, do I have any white SATA cables? That'd be fun. White. I do not. I don't have a single white SATA cable in here. Okay. Uh, at this point, uh, we do have, sorry, there's sirens going on. Something crazy is happening outside right now. Probably my fault. Uh, we do have this RGB cable that's coming off of the uh, fan and RGB hub that's built into the case. It is three pin, five volt addressable. And I think you can just plug in right here, this, this three pin header on the board, how convenient. Was there something else? Ooh, you know what? Instead of doing that, because we have we, we have two more cables to connect to the SSDs, because they are RGBAF, these guys. So it's micro USB on one end, plugs in right at the top of the SSD next to the SATA power. So there's one, and then uh, and then on the other side of these cables is is another three pin five volt connector, which means we won't have enough three pin headers on our motherboard for everything that we have in this build because we've got we need three of them technically now. We only have two on the board. There's one at the bottom, one at the top. That's okay because I think I have a splitter that I hope will work. Okay, let me get the uh, the addressable RGB splitter. I have. Right here. This is actually a little overkill. There's six of them. Six-way splitter. Good God, oh, this is from EK. Forgot this was an EK product. You got a six-way five-volt splitter. So three of them will be unused, but at least we'll get everything connected. I'm gonna connect this octopus to the bottom. Uh, this right here. Here's the other addressable header. Sorry, this has become the most annoying plug to plug in in a PC. Is the five volt address when you can't, when especially when it's at the bottom, can't really get a good side angle on it. You just got to shoot from the front, attack it head on. Did it okay that time? All right, time for our GPU. And once this guy's in and wired up, we will pretty much be done with the build. Oh wait, what am I? Doing. This is, these are the vertical slots. We don't want to mount it vertically, although that is an option. They do have vertical GPU mounting uh, slots here, two slots for you vertical mounters. I am going to do more traditional horizontal. I think if we do vertical in this case, because it's already a pretty small case, it'll actually obfuscate a lot of the motherboard and even part of the cooler, which I want to, I want to be visible as possible. So this is like a perfectly sized GPU for this case. 
do, 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 do. Honestly, this case was phenomenally easy to build in. And I, so far, I would say I agree with, with the positive reviews. I really like this case, surprisingly. It's, it's really easy to build in. There's generous room behind the case for, uh, behind the motherboard for cable management. Cable management is actually good. Lots of tie down points, straightforward, but it's, it works really well for a case, you know, like this, where you're not gonna be connecting a bajillion things, just more or less for a more simple build. And the airflow looks promising. I mean, there's just tons of mesh at the front, 200 millimeter fan, three 120s that are all included with the price. Uh, yeah, color me impressed, Mustex. Put a link in the bottom. The description is always if you guys are at all interested. All the other stuff that we're using for this build will be down there too. Okay. Yo, this build actually looks pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. I really like how this is turning out. Give me a sec to wrap up the cable management. I'll install Windows on here, get the RGB all configured how I want it, and then we'll go from there. All right, here she is, all done. Let's take a look. Yeah, I went with green. I went with green, which makes zero sense because there's not a lick of NVIDIA in here. It's AMD from top to bottom. So I was like, you know, there's already parts of this build that don't make sense, like two 500 gig SSDs. So why stop there? Uh, but it looks really good. And I haven't done like green LEDs in a while. It looks, looks pretty cool. Um, I'm very impressed with myself and how good the build looks. It just it, it just came together so, so nicely in the end. You you guys let me know what you think though. I think I think you did a pretty good job. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, oh yeah, I did have some difficulty configuring all the LEDs as always RGB is a pain in the ass, especially when you've got products from a bunch of different vendors. Um, so what I ended up doing was I removed the octopus splitter, uh, the uh, five volt addressable RGB splitter at the end because I didn't really need it. Uh, we already have the the uh, the fans, all the fans in the in the system, at least all the case fans. Those are, those are all wired up. I forgot, obviously, to the uh, to the front panel, uh, the built-in controller of the case that's behind the motherboard tray that we looked at earlier. So didn't need one. I uh, didn't need to connect it to the motherboard for that. I did connect uh, both of these SSDs to the two addressable headers on the board, so uh, they are being uh, occupied. But the RAM and the Wraith cooler, those are actually being controlled via Signal RGB, which is a free app. Uh, they're one of our partners. This this is not not sponsored at all, but I, I do I do like their app. Um, and it works beautifully for getting a lot of your components to match perfectly as you want them to. So the one component whose RGB I couldn't get to change for the life of me was the graphics card. Uh, there's a, an LED logo right here, but I covered it up with, with some, some black tape, some electrical tape, uh, because it just, it was all rainbowed out and stuff and didn't really match. So I just blacked it out. But uh, yeah, I don't know if, it, if, if I could have used, like, I don't think Asus Aura Sync would have worked because it's an ASRock motherboard. Polychrome, uh, ASRock's Polychrome RGB app was not recognizing the card. Neither was Signal RGB. So in the end, I just, I just covered it up, whatever. I'm sure you guys hardly even notice that the, the tape's there and stuff. Blends in pretty nicely. But yeah, aesthetically, the build looks, ah yeah. Ah, fire, as, as the kids say these days. And what else? Oh, let's talk about uh, performance, shall we? I actually just installed Far Cry 6, the newest one on this PC, and I ran some benchmarks just really quick. I did the, uh, the built-in benchmark at 1080p. We got an average frame rate of 82. 82 FPS, not too shabby. As you guys know, the 6600 XT is poised for 1080p max settings uh, gaming, and that's exactly what we ran, 1080p ultra settings across the board in this game. 82 FPS, not bad at at all. And then I even ran a 1440p benchmark just to see if it could hang, and it definitely could. We scored 72 frames per second, 72 frames per second at 1440p, uh, which is actually not that much of a gap between uh, the 1080p benchmark numbers. So what I'm thinking there, it's the 5600G that is maybe bottlenecking the GPU a tad. Uh, and I'm sure if we slot it in like a 5600X or 5800X, 5900X, whatever, um, then we'd see that score go up quite a bit. Uh, but that's the nice thing about this build. If, if you did put together something like this, it's got a B550 motherboard, you could easily scale up an upgrade to, um, let's say an eight core or maybe even a 12 core Ryzen 5000 series processor in the future. So definitely a nice little upgrade path and it's staying nice and cool as well. We've been playing Far Cry 5, I've been playing Far Cry 6, sorry, uh, for about 15 minutes or so. We're just kind of in the, uh, the beginning of the game, of course, started a fresh, uh, a fresh campaign. And you can see here GPU is at 56C right now at 99% load and our CPU is only hitting about 52 degrees Celsius. It's obviously not being taxed nearly as much as the GPU, this being a graphically intensive game, very GPU bound. But uh, overall, the system is doing great. I'm really happy with um, with the case thermals, uh, as you just saw. So it's, uh, it's actually doing a great job. And you put your hand in there, 
put your hand in here. There's, there's a lot of air flowing through this thing. Really, really nice. So overall, beautiful build. Beautiful build, fast build, and not overly expensive. You know, I, I think I paid about, I think the total out the door was probably around $1,200 for everything when all was said and done, not including tax, of course. That's gonna vary from, uh, you know, based on your country or your, your region, but uh, 1200 bucks for everything. And that's assuming that you can get this card for MSRP. Bear that in mind. That's only if you can find this card, the Asus RG Strix RX 6600 XT for $400, which is what I estimated its MSRP to be. I couldn't find an official MSRP online or anything, um, but uh, 380, 379 for the base is the uh, base MSRP for, for the 6600 XT. And with something like this, a board partner card that's got a uh, custom cooler on it and uh, maybe it is factory overclocked as well. You're gonna pay a slight premium for that. So I, I put it as $400, but uh, with that said, that's the build, that's the video. Let me know what you think of it and what you'd like to see me build next. I, I got a kick out of this. I, I really enjoyed doing this build and just again, really couldn't be happier with how it turned out. Uh, both aesthetically and uh, and functionally. It's, it's actually pretty quick. So thank you guys for watching this video. Tell us a like if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content on the way. And I will see you guys in the next video. Pew!